looking for a quilt that you can make in one day? Well, I've got the project for you. Hi, I'm Catherine from the Delphio Quilt Company, and I've got a really quick quilt project for you today. And that is this Fat Corner Friendly Spooky Quilt. So this quilt comes together so quickly because we're using fat quarters to start with, and then we're gonna stack several at a time and cut them at the same time. And I've got a quick sewing method to share with you to make it go really fast. So if you're looking for a project and you don't have much time, but you've got 16 fat quarters, this might be a project worth trying out. And if you're interested in the pattern, we do have it available on our website, and it'll be 50% off for the rest of October of 23. And when you make this quilt, you'll have enough left over to make the bonus project, which will be the video that's coming out after this one. All right, let's get started on this quick quilt project. I've got a couple of the fat quarters here from the Spooky and Witchy collection. And that collection is very adorable, so if you're looking for a nice Halloween collection, you might want to check that one out. And we do need to pair these fat quarters up, either a light and a dark, or maybe something that complements but has enough difference in it so that you can see the difference in the pattern. You wouldn't want to do a black on a black because then you're really not going to get the look of the quilt. So once you have your fat quarters paired up, so a total of eight pairs from those 16 fat quarters, we're just going to lay the pairs right sides together. And we want to make sure that the salvage is aligned on the same side. That way we don't end up short when we're cutting this. So I'm just going to make sure my edges are as lined as best as I can get them. You may find that when using fat quarters, they're not always cut perfectly straight. So then the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to square this up a little bit. It's a little bit off, so I am just going to line up my fat quarters and try to get a nice straight edge here. I'm not cutting too much off because I want to make sure I maintain most of the fat quarter size. So we need a really good portion of it. Then I'm just going to turn it and I'm just going to use the lines on my ruler here for that straight edge that I just cut here. I'm going to kind of use that as my starting point. And then I'm able to use that line to square up this edge here. And again, you don't want to take too much off, just enough to square it up. And now to cut this, I'm going to start with my first strip first, which is going to be five and three quarters inch by the width of the fat cord, the long width. So it's going to be 22 inches typically. Sometimes fat quarters are a little longer and sometimes they're a little shorter. And then once I cut that piece, I'm then going to move on to cutting a 10 inch section where I'm going to have a 10 inch square. And I'm going to cut from the other part of that three five inch squares and one five and three quarter inch squares. And then I should have left over about a two inch strip that I plan on using for some binding in the future. So I wouldn't throw that one away. I would just keep it and set it aside and maybe use it for your binding. All right, let me get my strips cut here. And you could probably do two pairs of fat quarters together. I know when I made the whole quilt, I did actually um, two sets together and that makes it go even faster. Okay, so I've got my first strip cut here, so that's the five and three quarters by 22 inches. I'm gonna keep this together and just set it aside for now. And then I'm gonna cut the 10 inch section, and I'm gonna use the guides on my mat to cut that 10 inches. If you're not quite sure how to use your mat for the measurements, all these one inch marks, they line up nicely with the one inch marks of the rulers where they should line up. So what I do is I count out 10 inches and then I use my ruler lines to make sure I'm lined up with the other marks on the mat to make sure it's nice and square. And then when I'm ready, I will cut it. Again, keep this for your binding later. Again, I'm keeping these two pieces together. Then I'm gonna cut my 10 inch square next. Set that aside. And then I'm gonna cut two of the five inch squares. Okay. 
And then this next one, I'm gonna cut five and three quarters inch first because I need to make sure I don't cut that short. And then I'm gonna cut the five and three quarters by five inch rectangle and the last five inch square. Okay. And this is just five inches here. We'll keep this five and three quarters by five inches together because we're gonna sew those together in a little bit. And then my last five inch square. So we actually only need a couple five inch squares to make this quilt for each of the blocks. But I'm gonna save the rest of these because next week I'm gonna have a video where I use these up for a different project. And if you don't wanna do the project that I show next week, you can certainly save these because they are the size of a charm square. Okay, so I'm bringing back my sections that are five and three quarters inch in height and 22 inches or the width of the fat quarter. And then also my five and three quarter inch by five inch section. So on this long rectangle piece, I'm gonna sew a quarter inch on both of the long sides of this. And then on the five inch by five and three quarter inch piece, I'm gonna sew a quarter inch seam on both of the five inch sides of this one. And you do wanna make sure that your pieces are right sides together and that your edges are nicely lined up. All right, so now I've got my pieces sewn. So again, I did a quarter inch on the 22 inch sides of this long rectangle piece, and then a quarter inch on the five inch side of the five and three quarters by five inch piece. So now on both of these pieces, I'm gonna find the middle point of that five and three quarter inch side, which should be at two and seven eighths inch. And then I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna cut right down the middle of both of these sets. And then I'm gonna use the guides of my ruler to make sure I've got this line nice and straight. And then once we have these open and pressed, it should measure about five and one quarter inch by the original five inch height. Same thing for this longer section. I'm gonna to measure to the halfway point, which is two and seven eighths inch. And I'm gonna cut right down the middle. And then I'm gonna press the pieces and I am gonna press the seams open on each of them. All right, and then on the strips, I'm just gonna cut these in five inch sections. You will have a little bit left over on the end and that is okay. You should be able to get four of these out of each of the strip sets. And just a little bit left over from that. And same with the other one here. So five inch sections, total of four pieces. Okay, so I've got my pieces done from these first two fat quarters. And you can either proceed with the rest of the fat quarters and get all these pieces sewn, or you could just do a few blocks at a time, whatever your preference is. I'm just gonna show you the two, just to show you how I put this together. So we're gonna bring back our 10 inch square, and then we need a total of four of these five and a quarter by five inch sections now. And then we need one of our five inch squares. I did on mine decide to go with the opposite of the 10 inch square, but you really could do this matching whatever your preference is. You could even mix things up if you wanted to among the other fat quarter pieces. But this is essentially how this block is gonna look. And then to sew it together, I'm gonna first sew this top row here. So these three pieces together. And then I'm gonna sew these two side pieces and then I'm gonna sew the two side pieces to the 10 inch square. When you're sewing the side piece to the 10 inch square, it should line up pretty nicely. If it's a little off, this is where you could trim either one just to make sure that they align. If you do end up trimming, just be consistent in your sizes throughout your quilt and it should turn out just fine. Right now that I got this bottom row sewn together, I'm gonna sew the top 
And this is really the only place I've found that you need to be real careful on these blocks to line up. And I just want to make sure the seam of where my five inch in this section here meets matches this seam here. Now I've got one of these blocks all sewn together. And I did stay consistent with pressing open the seams on this block. And so then for the other set from these back quarters, same thing, just opposite. You're going to take four of these pieces, one of your five inch squares, and your 10 inch square. And you're just going to sew those like you did the other set. Now you should have two of these sets left over from each pair of fat quarters. You do need these for the quilt because you're going to need it for the top and one of the sides just to make it more symmetrical. And so for these, you're just going to sew the two matching sets together and then repeat that with the other ones. And then to put the rest of the quilt together, you're just going to take those extra sets of strips that you had from before and then you're going to use a few of your leftover five inch squares for the corners. And if you're making this, make sure you keep those extra squares because next week I'm going to come back with another little Halloween project where we're going to use them all up. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you haven't yet, please subscribe and visit our little quilt shop at DelphiaQuiltCo.com. Have a wonderful day.